Hey, Joanne and Stephen here. You know, we've been giving away tickets to uh, Bad Out of Hell, the musical, Meatloaf's Music, right? And we've got two of the stars of the show with us. So good to have you guys here. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for having us. Give us an introduction, first of all. Sure. Uh, I'm Emily Schulteis, okay. and I play Raven. Okay. I'm Andrew Pollack. I play Strat. You so uh, so he, he's based off of I guess uh, the Stratocaster guitar. Uh -huh. and it, it, for short, it's Strat. We're in this uh, post-apocalyptic world. Okay. Uh, Manhattan, the island has broken off from the rest of the country in some cataclysmic event. Hate it when that happens. Yeah, <laughs> all the time, right? <laughs> Apparently, it's going to happen to California. Well, that's the thing we about every year. Well, yeah, but years, years, and years <laughs> later. <laughs> And basically, uh, there's a weird anomaly in this uh, land of obsidian, it's now called. Mm -hmm. uh, I play Strat, he's a revolutionary who's always 18. He never ages, and okay. he leads this band of lost boys and girls that are all 18 and they never age. Kind of a little Peter Panish thing. Yeah, yeah. a little mm -hmm. Peter Panish. And then we kind of get also a mix of Romeo and Juliet. Uh, he uh, is rebelling against <laughs> why this. Not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> he's rebelling against this tyrannous ruler named Falco, and all of a sudden he sees that Falco has a daughter named Raven. Uh, there you go. There you are. Enter stage right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> stage left. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's always one of the two. <laughs> exactly. 50-50 chance there, right? Now this is all this is all set to and inspired by the music of Meatloaf. Is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. Yes. Yeah. So the whole the whole thing, it's almost like I mean, I'll say Mamma Mia, which I adore in Abba Abba's music, <laughs> which you say, say Abba. 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 Um, so it's kind of that thing. It's taking his collection or Meatloaf's music and weaving it through a story. Yeah, it's like um, it's like a rock opera concert um, with like a really fantastic story. So yeah. cool. And uh, what's so surprising is actually the the story came before the music. Back when they were first trying to get the Bat Out of Hell album uh, produced right. and signed to a record label in 1977, before that, Jim Steinman had the idea of this musical, mm -hmm. and it was called Neverland, and uh, he wanted to put these songs into the musical because uh, he had this crazy idea about Peter Pan running off with Wendy, <laughs> and Wendy and Peter, they get married, and then Wendy would sing uh, Heaven Can Wait, because she can't believe that she's in Neverland. Right. And uh, basically, they sent the script to the J.M. Barry estate, obviously the author of Peter Pan. And the lawyer of the J.M. Barry estate read the script and said, I'm sorry, I can't give you the rights to this huh. because I'm really lost with the section where there are flying nuns on motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of went into like permanent hiatus. Yeah. And then it kind of took a different route, and Meatloaf uh -huh. started singing all of Jim Steinman's songs. So cool. And Have you so, so anyway, you play basically a character based on, I, I guess, safe to say, Meatloaf then, right? Uh, I Kinda guess ish. Peter Pan more okay. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think Meatloaf says originally he was supposed to play the character of Tink. Oh, okay. Like Tinkerbell. Uh, Tinker, yeah. Right, right. But he would be like a 400-pound <laughs> Tinkerbell character. How about that? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Have you guys performed this around the country? Um, well, what's really exciting is that um, Detroit is actually going to be the first place that Bad Out of Hell has performed in the United States. Oh, okay. I didn't realize okay. that. That's great. You do, Wonderful. You're doing what, like 15 shows? Yeah. Is, that, is that correct? Or like two weeks? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Um, yeah, and it's going to be so fun. There have been productions all over the mm -hmm. world, um, UK, in Toronto, and Andrew has been, you know, a part of it since yeah. its conception. You have been. So uh, this, okay. I'm hopping on the, you're the, the North American here. bandwagon. Yeah. yeah I guess oh, I'm good. the veteran. She's the, the fresh, new, amazing energy rock star. So, you need that yeah. sometimes, oh, right? Absolutely. You need the fresh energy to, uh, to, you know, come to a show. Have either of you been to Detroit before, before this? To the, uh, yesterday was our first yeah. time. Well, what did you think? In. We love it. Yeah. yeah. We absolutely love it here. I mean, I... I've never been to the Midwest before, uh -huh. so it, it really feels like a full experience of love and joy in the heart of America. <laughs> We're such good people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's right? Uh, you know, because you said you're from Indiana, is that right, or Illinois? Which one Indiana. Did you? Okay. Um, and so it's just like, even just driving down the highway and like through the streets, it just like, it feels like home, yeah. you know? Coming yeah. back home. To well, the Detroit. You know, we were talking about this. We're going downtown. We're bringing our show downtown tomorrow, and we were talking about what you want to show people when 
when they come to town, right? Because admittedly, Detroit doesn't hasn't had a great reputation through the years as a city. And what we have done, the resurgence of our city is pretty spectacular, and you're going to see that in town now. Absolutely. You know? We need suggestions yeah. on where we should go. Oh, okay. Yeah, we need well, some listen tomorrow morning. We, we got need whole some comments. <laughs> okay. We need some we'll people <laughs> telling us your favorite restaurants. Do you that. Know. So we're yeah. if you're watching this Facebook yeah. Live, let well, us know. know. Give them some suggestions. Uh, I want to go back to, a little bit to the music, because the music of Meatloaf obviously is much older than either one of you guys. Yeah. How does it stand Much. up to a, a newer generation? Oh, I mean, these these songs are iconic. Yeah. Um, I Especially because I feel like also, probably, I mean, I'm speaking for Andrew here, I guess, you out speak of turn. For me. But, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, like our, our she parents definitely grew up with that music. Yeah. My dad was like blasting it on road trips, always like playing the Bad Out of Hell album specifically like around the house when we're cleaning and doing all these kinds of things. And then it's also that other thing of just like, it's so, I feel like Meatloaf is just the godfather of rock. Yeah. And there are so many songs even you can listen to and be like, oh, that's Meatloaf? Right. I've known yes. that song since yeah. I was a kid. Or that's on a commercial somewhere that I've heard. Yeah. Like, and, and not even know, it's like really woven into the fabric of our society, yeah. I feel like. So yeah. it's it's very like generationally universal. And, and definitely it's very theatrical music also, which really oh, lends itself. Oh, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, all the, if you go back and watch like the live performances where Paradise by the Dashboard Light, he's like pulling his like backup singers and they're like going through, I mean, they're essentially performing right. like a mini musical. I mean, that number is like, a little 10 minute musical in right, itself right. and like goes through like a whole journey but um, and do you do that whole song i assume in this oh it's in there it's yeah in, okay the, yeah. all all the well-known ones are in there and yeah. uh, a couple of new ones as well okay. oh so, really yeah what is your favorite one to perform oh geez uh we really like uh and i guess i'm speaking for emily too we really like crying out loud huh. uh, it's like what as you would call it the 11th hour oh yeah the, the 11 o'clock number oh yeah um kind of like yeah, it's like the culmination of Stratton Raven's relationship um, and kind of like the, the the climax of the cat and mouse game that we've been playing for the whole show. Mm -hmm. And it's just like so energetic and um, has like low lows and high highs and That's it's great. such a blast. What have you guys done before? Have you done stuff on Broadway, off Broadway, traveling tours like this? What What's your, what's your um, background? I actually, Last year, got off the national tour of Wicked. Oh, um, wonderful! Yeah, which I know was in Detroit. Yes, it sure yep. was. Recently, yeah. um, I wasn't with the production, mm -hmm. but I was, you know, jealous of them. Right. Being here without me, and now I get to come here too. So yeah, it's great. Yeah, fantastic. How about you? Goodness gracious, uh, this is my first large part. Is it? Uh, right. Yeah. I I don't know. I kind of fell into this very. Uh, Serendipitously, I, I was auditioning for the SpongeBob musical at the time. <laughs> okay, yeah. So uh, I had on like I don't know, I had on like a SpongeBob outfit, right. like a SpongeBob T-shirt. I'm, like, I'm not well, sure I'm believing any of this. But yeah, I don't know. I might be plugging the wrong thing here, but um, <laughs> but I had like a backpack too, and I, I brought I don't know. They said bring a musical instrument, and I brought like a huge, big red like floor tom drum. Uh -huh. Okay. I was gonna bang away on it, and it just so happened that the person I was sitting next to said, "Hey, are you going to the Bat Out of Hell?" Um, open call that's just down the street. And I was like, do you mean like Meatloaf, Bad right. Out of Hell, there's gonna be a musical. And the guy was like, ah, oh, no, no, it's, it's, it's written by like some guy named Jim, I think it's a misnomer. <laughs> and you know, we, you know that Meatloaf and Jim Steinman had collaborated to make this music and... Um, Apparently that guy didn't. Yeah, right, he, exactly. he didn't, <laughs> but oh, I guess, yeah. He just guess, wanted the job. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So I was like, ah, oh, jeez, I should go. So I, I walked the drum down the streets of New York City and bumped into a lot of people on the way, and they weren't very pleased with me. But you, but know, you were dressed like SpongeBob. Yeah, so I was dressed like so. SpongeBob. I mean, who can get mad at SpongeBob, right? It's true. And then or Patrick. Yeah, or yeah. Patrick. <laughs> and then you walk into that audition room, and everyone's dressed up with leather jackets and like spiky belts, and here yeah. I am in SpongeBob oh land. Oh my gosh! And they probably took one look at you and said, "That is Meatloaf." Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you got the job. Yeah, or they were like, "No, no, no, that audition is right. down the street. You're at the wrong place." So, oh, that's great. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's where you went, wind up at the right time. Exactly, exactly. right? Yeah. Well, that's absolutely. great, you guys. So November sixth, right, is the first performance. 15, 15 performances while you're in town. Well, enjoy Detroit. You oh. Know? oh, we're they so can't excited. Wait. We yeah. can't wait. Yeah. And we're going to get comments on this of where you should go. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Please. Restaurants, sites to see, museums. We love museums. Oh, you got to go, Green, you gotta go to Greenfield Village. Yeah, Greenfield you guys, Village. Right off like the bat. It's all okay. part of the Air Force thing, automotive. Whole, yeah. Greenfield I also yeah. need like, the best donuts in Detroit, whatever they are. 
Well, you know, we Dunkin' Donuts argument. is the official sponsor of the morning show, so. <laughs> you can start some arguments. So we're going to Dunkin'. I'm all about, you know, America runs on Dunkin'. <laughs> yes, you're so good. I say it every morning. And, and you also have to try the different Coney. So you'll find around here it's called a Coney Island. Yeah. It's not like you know it from New York. It's uh, not like that. It's no. a whole different thing. Yes, okay. Go so, on. It's, so it's, okay, Lafayette and American Coney Island are right next to each other downtown, not far from the Fox yeah. at all, where you Ooh. guys are going to be performing. Um, and it's they're they're chili dogs, right? Ooh. Conies dogs. with chili oh. and mustard and onions. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And they're called conies, but you'll walk in there expecting a New York Coney experience. It's not the same thing. It's a Detroit Coney. Yeah, Detroit Coney. Okay. They're amazing. All right. Okay. We'll look for the Detroit Coney specifically. Yeah. So right. so yeah, you read these comments and you come back. We'll give you a lot more. But there, that's just to get you started. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. Teaser so and appetizer. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you won't need a main meal after the hot dog. Yeah, exactly. So that's more than exactly. an appetizer. Anyways, thanks, you guys. Oh, thank Emily you so Andrew, much. We appreciate it. Yeah, Good luck on the show. Break it. a leg, as they say. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> not really. Yeah. Take care. Thank you.